18 months ago, I did a video on the Raspberry Pi Debug Probe. I've had these in my environment for two years now and been using them nearly every day. I'm not quite as in love with these devices as I was, but let me tell you why. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. I've never really got on with using Boot Cell as part of the iterative development cycle. Though there are some tools and techniques for making this less fiddly and hands-on really, uh, like Pico tools, I've always preferred to use SWD to flash the Pico, normally via OpenOCD as a utility. In the early days, I used a Raspberry Pi 4 to bitbang the SWD interface. That was great 90% of the time, but sometimes things didn't quite work and it got a little bit annoying. The Raspberry Pi Debug Pro changed all that because it provided a 100% reliable approach for me to flash my Pico and of course to also debug it. Um, two years on, my usage has evolved a bit and I want to tell you a bit about that. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year and I'd appreciate your help getting me there and I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more. When it comes to loading code onto the Pico, there are two basic strategies. Boot cell, where we hold down that boot select button by either applying power or restarting the Pico, so the Pico goes into a USB key mode and we can load a UF2 file onto it. The other strategy is to use SWD, single wire debug, and that's those three pins at the back of a Pico or a Pico W. And we can use an adapter board to connect into that so that we can actually flash the Pico and take remote control of it. This also gives us the ability to debug. This video is sponsored by Cancun. Cancun are a friendly online retailer in the UK for modules, components and tools. Cancun also stock the RP2040 Zero module I'm using as a Pico Probe in this video. Cancun have kindly offered a discount to my channel viewers on the first order. Just quote Dr. John EA20 at checkout to get a 20% discount. This excludes electronic test equipment and tools. Go check out Cancun today. One way to flash the Pico using uh, SWD is to use the Raspberry Pi debug probe. And that's a great little device with three connectors on it. So we've got a USB that we can plug into our, our laptop, and then we've got two uh, JST SHs. One of those goes straight to the SWD port, and it's one marked as debug, and the pinout on this is the same as the pinout and the order on a Pico. And then the other side is the uh, UART. Basically, it gives you UART over USB coming out of the front of the debug probe. I've talked about it before about how to actually connect these things up, so I won't go through that again. Um, when we drive it, well, one way of driving it, there are other ways of driving it. Uh, to actually flash a Pico is to use Open OCD, and that's what I tend to use. Now, the Open OCD command is um, a bit verbose to say the least. I mean, you know, what's that? Uh, five lines worth of command in order to actually flash a Pico. Uh, and that will be flashing a Pico with whatever I'd set the environmental variable of ELF to. So the ELF binary that I'm going to push across. In actual fact, I don't type in that command all the time. What I actually do is I have scripts in my environment that do that for me. I've got a script called Pico Deploy and one called Pico Debug. Uh, those scripts are actually a little bit more clever than just running those code. Uh, so Pico Deploy goes and actually finds the binary for me. Uh, so if I, depending on the different sort of structures of my project from a build directory, it can find where those binaries are and, and just flash them over to the Pico for me. Now, generally, I've been really, really happy using the Debug Pro. They've been great. And I've got two of the things. Um, because I actually generally are working on multiple projects at once, uh, that may not be the most effective, but when you're trying to get videos out and uh, work out things for the future, you end up working on multiple projects. And I was happily running on two boards. 
Unfortunately, one of them has since died. Um, it, well, at least partially died. The SWD side of it seems to no longer function. Um, and it's not my cables or any of those things. It definitely is the board. Uh, switching from one board to another gets, uh, uh, and it will work. So these uh, are obviously being plugged in and, and pulled out all the time and obviously stresses even within a year is enough to uh, cause one of them to fail, which is a shame. But on the other hand, it has forced me to look at other strategies. So are there alternatives to using a Debo probe? Um, yes, there absolutely are. And some of them are cheaper and equally as good. So the code for the debug probe is actually all open source and available on the Raspberry Pi's repos. Which means that you can actually run that code yourself. And this has been true for some time. Um, and I built myself a, a Pico probe, as they get called if you build your own, um, uh, a while ago on a, uh, a prototype board. It's not a very uh, pretty looking board, I must admit, and it's not a very pretty looking device. I put it on a separate board to try and sort of mimic how a debug probe works. And because I didn't really want to lose uh, 40 um, rows from my uh, breadboard because I had a second Pico on the, on the breadboard. Now, when I was playing with this, this was pre the current architecture that they run for Pico Probe and Debug Probe. Uh, this thing called CMSIS. Uh, which is the new sort of reusable ARM strategy for working with these types of processors. Really, I wouldn't worry too, about too, too much about that, just a little bit of history. So my actual strategy these days is actually not to build separate boards, but to use one of the other RP2040 boards, the uh, Zero2040. The Zero 2040 is actually only nine pins deep on each side, so 18 pins off of my breadboard, which isn't too much to actually sacrifice. It's also got a nice USB-C connector, which makes uh, it a little bit more resilient than the micro USB I find in insert, repeated inserts and pulls out. So I can actually use that to uh, become a basically a debug probe. It runs the same software, slight modification to use slightly different pins to work because we've actually got less pins available for us on the Zero 2040. So the code to go and actually build your own debug probe, well, it's all there up on GitHub sites uh, from Raspberry Pi. So go get it, modify it, and then you can flash the code yourself. And from a software point of view and running OpenOCD, um, Open OCD can't tell the difference between going to a debug probe that's genuine and come from Raspberry Pi and a zero or anything else, um, another RP2040 running the same code. Where are we really with these different approaches and different devices for uh, programming or flashing the Pico? Well, Boots Hell, I do use Boots Hell. It's, it's a really useful, convenient approach to get binaries onto a Pico. Generally binaries that are finished projects or that I know that are run um, rather than actually iterative development. Though there are some devices I have that really don't have SWD on them at all, which is a problem therefore, and I have to force into using this boot sale approach to doing iterative development. I don't like it, but it happens. The Raspberry Pi Depug Probe. Well, I still think these are great little devices, but for my use case, um, I may not be able to justify the additional cost. If you're using things like Pico H's or Pico WH's, i.e. the Picos that already have the headers soldered, and therefore they have a JSTSH for, um, connector on them, then do use the debug probes. They will save you a lot of the time. Or if you're new to the Pico ecosystem and getting the hang of things, then Use a debug probe, it will speed things up for you until you get comfortable with everything else. Once you've got to a point where you're familiar and comfortable with the environment and you're happy to hack the debug probe project so that you could actually run it on a 0 2040, then I'd run it on a 0 2040. Um, the 0 2040s are half the price of a Raspberry Pi debug probe 
um, and therefore this is a much cheaper way to get into uh, program your Picos. I still think the debug probe is a great product, but in some situations I can get by with a Pico probe running on an RP2040. Uh, really these are in some ways better because I've got USB-C which I find easier in my environment and no JSTSHs. What do you think? I know there are some other devices out there that have SWD interfaces for you know, your PCs and Mac. Do you use them? Would you recommend them? I'd be really interested in hearing as others would on the channel. Please drop in the comments into the comments. If you'd like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. And remember, I'm saving these up for get myself to open source in San Francisco next year and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. And I hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.